Hello everyone, Joe Thatcher here with Midwest Military Equipment. Uh, we're out front of our new building right now. Uh, behind me here is a 916A3. Uh, this is kind of what we wanted to showcase. We're going to do a driving video in it, kind of go over all the features of these vehicles, uh, talk about the engine, talk about the transmission, talk about the wheelbase. So uh, we'll get started on the front. As you can see, the front tires here are a four and a quarter Michelin floater. Uh, this truck originally came with CTIS. The CTIS has been removed. Uh, this particular unit, I believe, is a 2008. Uh, spare tires mounted on the side here. Uh, the engine itself is a Series 60 Detroit diesel, which we can go ahead and pull open the hood. It's backed by an Allison 7-speed automatic transmission. Uh, this is a touchpad transmission, not a manual shift. Um, overall, this truck, I think it's got right at about 6,000 miles on it. As you can see, paint condition, everything else, it's in really, really nice shape. We don't get many of these 916s in, so figured we'd do a little video, kind of go over the features and the characteristics of this vehicle. So as you can see, Detroit Series 60. This is a pre-emissions engine, so it does not have any emissions equipment in it. No DEF, no DPF. Uh, I believe they do have an EGR system, but it's a very primitive EGR system on them. Uh, as you can see, fuel filter is very easily accessible right here. It's a fuel water separator filter. You got the manual primer there. Washer fluid fill reservoirs there. Uh, all the air fittings and everything designed. Uh, this cab is actually designed off an FLD 120 cab, uh, which in the civilian world, that's a very common Freightliner cab. Uh, the front axle is an 18,000 pound front axle. Uh, so this truck is actually six wheel drive. A lot of the trucks that you see out there, uh, like the 915s, there's quite a few of those out there in the civilian world. Uh, those are not a six wheel drive truck. Those are a four wheel drive truck. So uh, going over to the other side, you can see for maintenance wise, coolant reservoir that was on the top of the engine, very easy to access, see what your fluid levels are. Uh, coolant filter is right here. You have your, your two oil filters down below there. Engine oil dipstick, engine oil fill, uh, transmission oil dipstick there as well. Overall, this truck is in very, very nice shape. Uh, everything's really, it's kind of a breeze to work on. Everything's right out there in front, easy to get to, easy to work on. Uh, you know, they've got petcock drains here on the lower radiator hose. There was just a lot of good engineering that went into these trucks. So, um, overall, this thing's just an absolute beautiful beast. So, um, we'll go ahead around to the back and we'll talk about the fifth wheel plate. Actually, while we're here on the front, so this actually has a uh, distance sensing in the front bumper. So, right now in the cab, it'll tell you, hey, we're eight feet from this wall right here. Uh, that's actually what that module right there does. Uh, the front bumper, you see these big tie downs here. This is actually designed for being lifting this vehicle up and putting it onto a boat or a barge. Uh, so you've got these shackles here that actually slide out on the truck. Um, it's got these heavy duty front tie downs as well. So if you're going to be using or working the truck off road, it gives you the ability to, you know, hook to it. If you were to get it stuck, uh, I would hate to get it stuck. Truck weighs right about 35,000, 35 to 36,000 as it sits. Uh, as you can see up here, this is the hydraulic oil reservoir for a wet kit. Uh, this truck does have a full wet kit on it. And then that is the control station for the winch. Back tires, as you can see, very good shape. Uh, there is your wet kit plug-in right below the winch system itself. So you can plug in like a if you're going to pull a Landall trailer or you have a trailer, any mechanic or any hydraulic trailer that does not have a pony motor, you're able to plug it in right there. Um, as you can see on the back of this, this is designed for a lay flat detached trailer. So those trailers, not as popular anymore in the civilian world as they used to be. So this is actually, uh, unlike you've probably seen in our videos with our uh, hydraulic neck goose neck trailers, this neck of this trailer actually lays flat. You drive up over the front of it. And that's what the idea behind the winch is. Not only to winch dead equipment onto the trailer, but you actually winch the neck of the trailer back up on and hook it to the fifth wheel. Um, an important thing too, that's a nice feature of these trucks, these have a standard 12 volt, seven pin uh, semi plug. So you can see all the lighting on the truck is LED. You've got glad hands and a 20 ton pedal hitch at the rear of the vehicle. And then you've obviously got the fifth wheel plate uh, the fifth wheel plate, and then this winch here, this is a uh, 45,000 pound first line capacity winch. I think it's like 24.5 all the way out. Uh, this newer truck, the 916A3s, unlike the older ones, uh, this has actually got a tough track suspension. 
Uh, some of the 915s that you see have a Hendrickson walking beam suspension. This tough track suspension is just a more modern, updated suspension design. Uh, rear axles, I believe, are rated at about 26,000 pounds a piece. So the GVW of this truck is pretty darn substantial. You've got toolboxes here, plenty of storage for chains, binders, uh, fuel tank on this side here. Um, these are able to be transported on a step deck without being over height. So that is a nice vehicle if you were to buy this from us, need it shipped somewhere. Uh, we can put this thing on a step deck. We've got to flatten the tires down some and sometimes remove the upper half of the exhaust depending on the trailer, but it gives you that versatility instead of having to put it on a detach to move it anywhere. So let's, uh, let's hop in this thing and take it for a ride. I'm going to hit the battery disconnect switch on the other side and uh, we'll fire it up, kind of go over some of the other features of the truck. So hopping into the truck here, everything's pretty straightforward. You've got your front axle lock switch here. That's the lock in the front axle. You can tell by I had to shut that door twice, these cabs on these trucks seal up very, very well. They're not like any other military vehicle. I mean, if you look, the door seal gaps are really, really tight. They've got a nice headliner in them with dome lights. They're already actually set up, which is straight out of a civilian truck. They're set up where you can put a CV or a radio in there very easy. You've got these covers, cubbies to store paperwork. Overall dash, very simplistic, uh, very utilitarian. You've got your exhaust brake switches here, push-pull for your parking brake and trailer parking brake. Uh, this is going back to the Norad Eaton system that senses distance right here. It says collision warning OK. You can adjust the volume, the brightness. It'll show your miles per hour. Uh, a lot of important stuff on there. It's a 12 volt SIG plug. Don't see that in a lot of military vehicles. Uh, overall, pretty straightforward. The CTIS is here, as you can see, it's been unplugged. It is not operational on this truck, as we kind of touched on that prior. Uh, so, what's the beauty about these trucks is it's not like driving a, you know, a normal Peterbilt or Kenworth, or at least one with a manual transmission. You've got a simple touch pad here. Gonna go ahead and release the parking brake. It's at your yellow. Look at all of our gauges here. Everything's coming up. We've got good air pressure. This is an air filter restriction gauge. Voltage is good. Oil pressure is good. Temperatures will obviously come up. Looks like we got about a quarter tank of fuel. Uh, this truck does have power mirrors too. So part of your pre-trip, you can run the mirrors and adjust them out as according. I kind of already adjusted them as I drove this truck the other day. You've got utility light switch over here on the back of the truck. The mirrors are also heated as well, which is nice. Uh, it does have provisionary wiring for a beacon on the top of the cab, so you can put right here on this beacon switch, there's wiring up on the top of the cab that does the beacon. Panel lights adjustment is here, and then this is for the defrost. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the vehicle in reverse. Take a look at our mirrors here. Start backing up. One thing that's important too, if you notice while we're backing up here, look out the rear window. It does have a safety screen over this glass. A lot of semis when you're bobtailing them, you know, you run the risk of potentially breaking out your rear window. What's great about this is it's a, it's a very large rear window. So you can see all the way to the left, all the way to the right from the operator's position. Uh, you can see the control station of the winches very easily. But what's nice about this is you know, a lot of civilian trucks, the rear windows are not as large in them, and you know, having that large rear window, and as you can tell here by also with the turning radius, back up and turn very easily. You've got nice spotter mirrors, which gives you good visibility out on the front of the truck. Important thing I almost forgot is we gotta turn our lights on. Still has a military three lever light switch. Uh, so we're gonna click it all the way over to the right in the uh, service drive position take this thing out and give it a little run. So, I really enjoy these 916s. They're absolute beasts of trucks. We actually hook some trailers up to them and move some stuff around the yard with them. And they do very, very well. The seven speed transmission is pretty awesome. One characteristic that I'll point out about the seven speed right now, it shows we're in fourth gear. You can manually shift this down. So say you're running some hills and you do not want to be running 
and uh, you want to be able to not ride the brakes as bad, put a little bit more load on the truck, even using the exhaust brake, you can actually manually shift this down. So you felt right there, kicked it all the way down to first gear, then you can run it back up, so where that way it shifts normal. So right now it will shift all the way to seventh gear. You can limit it six, fifth, fourth, so on and so forth. Take it out here. Run it out on the main road. These trucks will do about 65 miles an hour. Um, sweet spot, like any military vehicle, 60 seems to be the sweet spot. We got a yellow light here. We kick the exhaust brake on. So this is a two-stage jig. You've got your first stage jig and your second stage jig. It'll uh, pretty much bring you to about a dead stop. So we'll take it out and do the loop here and kind of show you how it runs out. Overall, just really, really like these trucks. One thing that I didn't bring out either is uh, they do have a glove box. That's not very common in the military truck world in order to have a glove box in a truck. You just don't see it like the Stuart Stevenson's. Uh, a lot of the Oshkosh trucks, they really, for creature comforts and being able to use this truck, it, uh, it's really, really nice from that aspect to have, you know, a cup holder, some storage up above, good and a glove box. Good AC. Good AC, too. Yeah, so AC, we're, it's 95 degrees out right now. And as you can see, not like I am in a lot of my videos, I'm not, not sweating at all, just enjoying the drive and using the truck, what it was intended to do without making it feel like work so we completely gone through we changed the oil on the engine we changed the fuel filters we service the transmission uh, we went through all the differentials uh, i believe the rear axles we changed the oil on the front axle we did not the fluid looked very fresh and clean in there we inspected the hubs checked the kingpins kingpin bushings uh, we go through the steering aspect of the vehicle we adjust the brakes uh, just overall make sure everything's functioning as it should. You can see here it shows a collision alert as I was pulling up on this VORAD system, which you can shut it off, but I was coming straight at that light pole at that intersection and it said, all right, yep, you're potentially close to colliding with that, which, you know, fortunately <laughs> I can see that, but it's nice to have an early warning if you're going to put somebody in a truck that, you know, doesn't have much drive time experience or, uh, you know, fresh to getting their CDL, having a feature like that, you know, it's definitely kind of nice, especially when you're talking all an oversized and overweight. Bounce over and get out of this guy's way here. Uh, yeah, truck does ride a little rough being bobtail, but I think anybody that's familiar in the trucking community running a, uh, you know, a setup like this bobtail is never the most comfortable thing to ride in. <laughs> it's, it's designed to have weight behind it. So, uh, you can see that was that collision avoidance thing off, which I'll actually turn the volume down on it, so that way we don't have to listen to it anymore. Make a right here. Out of the hole, you can tell the truck gets off the line very, very well. They've got plenty of power. Brakes, you can let go of the wheel here and lay on the brakes pretty good. Truck tracks good and straight. Yeah, so the 916A3s, there's only, to my knowledge, there's only been probably about 2,000 of them released into civilian hands, which overall, military vehicle-wise, you look at like the 900 series trucks. I believe there was around 45,000 900 series trucks released. I think they're up to like 26,000 Humvees. So there's just not as many of these out here. We've probably had uh, about a dozen of these 916 A3s, and they always seem to go pretty quick. So this is the first time we've actually been able to do a video and kind of take somebody for a drive in one before they were to buy it and uh, showcase it off you know 90% of our clientele buys people are buys truck sight unseen so you know we're gonna be doing a lot more of these videos as we feel they're very important you know to showcase our inventory and you know we're kind of known for having a lot of very clean 
ex-military vehicles. And judging by looking at the floorboards of this truck, the dash, the windshield glass, the paint condition, overall the engine on how clean everything is on the engine, how well this truck's performing right now, you know, this is, gives us a good opportunity to showcase what we do and what makes our stuff different than the competition. You know, uh, we get a lot of phone calls about people asking, well, what all do you do to your trucks? Well, our mindset behind our company is you should be able to buy a truck, take it out, and use it. Now, there is certain things, you know, sometimes, hey, headlight burnt out. We do our best. We check the lights. We check the turn signals. We make sure things like that are functioning. Not to say six months down the road you're going to have a headlight fail. It's a consumable thing, but overall, overall being able to use and work the vehicle, we go through a lot of the mechanical characteristics that a lot of companies don't. And also, another big important thing is, is we make sure all of our trucks have clean titles. Uh, buying a military vehicle, there's a lot of times where they might have been acquired by a police department or a museum or an individual, and he might have bought it directly from the government and only got a certificate of 97, or never a certificate of 97, maybe even just a bill of sale. Going through and getting a truck license without having all the correct paperwork and documentation can sometimes be very difficult. And obviously, some states are more difficult than others. Uh, you know, Vermont is a state where you don't even have to have a title if the vehicle's over a certain age, but that being said, this freight liner here, we've got a clean, I believe it's Virginia title on it. Uh, whenever we go to sell it, we'll give you a Missouri Auto Dealer's bill of sale, a bill of sale, uh, and then we'll give you also a Missouri Auto Dealer's notice of transfer with the title, notice of transfer, and bill of sale. Uh, you should be able to license it just about in any state in the U.S. Uh, some states I know we've been getting some feedback on have been required, uh, since it's an out-of-state vehicle being transferred into their state, they require a safety inspection in the state of licensing. Uh, so we always recommend check with your local DMV to confirm stuff like that. Uh, you know, a lot of states require safety inspections. Missouri does require safety inspection. However, Missouri does not transfer to some other states and vice versa. So just be sure to do some of your research prior to that. Make sure that, uh, you know, you've got everything figured out prior to buying. We're more than happy to send you a copy of the title and a copy of the documentation that we're going to provide you with prior to uh, purchasing the vehicle, so that way you make sure you've got everything set set up and ready to go. So we appreciate your time watching this today. And uh, if you want to check out more awesome products, and more awesome trucks, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we can be reached at 636-900-9046 or on the web at MidwestMilitaryEquipment.com. Thanks for watching.